Welcome. In this tutorial video we will cover a brief introduction to automated gate safety and force testing, an introduction on legislation and why it is important to perform a force test on your automated system, an introduction to the KMG light system and functions, and then finally applying your knowledge of gate safety and the instrument in a test situation. Power-operated doors and gates are becoming state-of-the-art, and their numbers are constantly rising. More and more companies, as well as private households, are enjoying the benefits of automated entrance gates and garage doors. These automated gates and doors are machines and need responsible engineering, careful installation, and regular servicing. It is essential that gate safety awareness is highlighted among operators, service and installation companies, manufacturers, and the end users. Among the requirements for automated gates and doors, BSEN12453 and BSEN12445 define the obligation to measure their closing forces. The standards specify test points, maximum permissible force, and reaction time values. A system must detect an impact and reverse its drive within the standard values given. EN12453 defines areas of crushing, shearing, and draw in points on gates. It stipulates a maximum of 400 newtons of force are allowed before a gate must start to reverse in these areas. It also stipulates that the force exerted on contact must begin to reduce within 750 milliseconds to below 150 newtons. EN12445 defines the required force testing points on sliding and swinging gates, stipulating horizontal test points of 500mm, 300mm and 50mm from a stop post, vertical test points of 300mm from the top of the gate, 50mm from the bottom and halfway between these two points. The average value is then calculated from these results and assigned a pass or a fail. EN12445 compliant equipment must be used. For more information on automated gate safety, please visit the sites listed below. In this part of the tutorial, we will learn about the system and functions of the KMG Lite, from the basics up to extrapolating your data from the tool. Looking at the device from a distance, we have four main points of interest. The point of force application, where kinetic energy is transferred to the device to be converted into data. The display, where the data is shown in newtons and time measurements to provide accurate force data. The control button, which has two main functions, controlling the power of the device, but also used for scrolling through your result information, and the battery plug, which we'll come back to later. Moving in closer to the control panel, other displays four main points of interest, used for extrapolating your data. The numeric measurement results are displayed on screen with four numeric indicators. Next to these are measurement indicators, represented by four dots. Only three of them are crucial to your results. More on that later, 
For now, we return to the battery plug. When inserting the batteries, remove the battery plug at the end of the handle by twisting it counterclockwise, and then pulling it out. Be sure to insert the battery's positive end first. Activating the instrument. Press the control button once. While starting up, the device tests itself. After three seconds, the device is ready. When ready, apply the force vertically and axial. Measuring will automatically begin at 20 newtons. Within five seconds of the 20 newton trigger, the force signal is evaluated according to EN12453 and DIN18650. After the measurement and evaluation are finished, the instrument automatically displays the dynamic peak force that has occurred within measurement. The measurement unit for this value is in newtons, so here we have a dynamic peak force of 326 newtons. If the dynamic time exceeded the normative 0.75 seconds, the LED within the second display segment flashes. So here, our result is a dynamic peak force of 326 newtons with a dynamic time greater than 0.75 seconds. If the force value at the end of the 5 second measurement period exceeded 25 newtons, the LED within the third display segment flashes. Our result here is a dynamic peak force of 326 newtons with a force value greater than 25 newtons in a 5 second period. If the force value at the end of the 5 second measurement period exceeded 80 newtons, the LED within the third and fourth display segments flash. Our result here is a dynamic peak force of 326 newtons with a force value greater than 80 newtons in a 5 second period. After measurement, press the control button once. The display shows the value for the dynamic time in milliseconds. The LED within the second display segment is lit for orientation. Displaying the value of final force. After measurement, press the control button twice. The display will show the value of the final force in newtons. The LED within the third display segment is lit for orientation. By pressing the control button again, the display returns to the dynamic peak force, with the flashing segments for indication of dynamic time and final force value standard violations. Regardless of the current display state, the instrument is always ready to start a new measurement, whenever the required trigger force of more than 20 newtons is detected. To deactivate the instrument, press and hold the control button for 2 seconds to power down. If left inactive, the device will automatically shut down after 5 minutes. If the measured dynamic peak force exceeds the specified upper limit of 1600 newtons, the display shows a flashing 1600. The measurement results for dynamic time and final force value are not affected. If the battery voltage falls below a critical value, the display shows the message BAT. By pressing the control button, you can still continue your measurements, but change the batteries as soon as possible. If the device senses a zero force offset on startup, the display shows the message error. This message can also occur if the device is used outside the specific temperature or humidity range, or if the force application plate got stuck. Make sure the device is unloaded while starting up. Make sure that all environmental conditions are within the specified range. Make sure that the force application plate is neither stuck or soiled. Reboot the device. By pressing the control button, you can continue your measurement regardless of the displayed error. Here, we will run through the steps of taking your force test. We have three situations set up, a sliding gate, a swing gate, and a garage door. Starting with the sliding gate, we need to take our first reading at 50mm up and 50mm across. 
Place the instrument with the point of force application against the stop post facing the gate. And be sure to power on the device. When ready, initiate the opening sequence. Once the gate has hit the instrument and returned to the closed position, take your readings. Record them on the data sheets provided or using forcetesttool.com. But be aware that you can only use up to 10 measurements here. Repeat this step two more times to gather three results to calculate an average. Now place the instrument halfway up and 50 millimeters across and repeat the process. And again for 300 millimeters down, 50 millimeters across. When all is done, you should have nine results and three averages. For the next test, attach the first extender to the instrument. This time, place the extender against the stop post to take your 10th reading. Place it 50mm up and 300mm across. Initiate and test three times to gather your results for an average. Then repeat for the halfway up 300mm across. and the 300mm down, 300mm across. For the last set of tests, attach the second extender to the instrument and place the extender against the stop post to take your 18th reading. Place it 50mm up and 500mm across. Initiate and test three times to gather your results for an average and repeat for the halfway up 500 millimeters across. And then the 300 millimeters down, 500 millimeters across. Assign your averages a pass or a fail according to the guidelines of EN12453 and EN12445. Moving on to the swinging gate, these can be a little trickier than the sliding gate, as your measurements must now create an arc following the gate's rotation, and the instrument may need to be placed at an angle, like in this example. To start, place the instrument at 50mm up and 50mm across. Take your readings and record them, then repeat the process two more times. Now place the instrument halfway up and 50mm across and repeat the process. And again for 300mm down, 50mm across. When all is done, you should have 9 results and 3 averages. For the next test, attach the first extender to the instrument. This time place the extender against the stop post to take your 10th reading. Place it 50mm up and 300mm across. Initiate and test three times to gather your results for the average. And repeat for halfway up, 300mm across. And 300mm down. 300 millimeters across. For the last set of tests, attach the second extender to the instrument and place the extender against the stop post. This time taking your 18th reading. Place it 50 millimeters up and 500 millimeters across. Initiate and test three times, gather your results for the average. Repeat this for the halfway up, 500 millimeters across. And the 300 millimeters down, 500 millimeters across. Finally, moving on to the garage door, place the instrument 200mm across 
where the door meets the ground, with the point of force application facing upwards. When ready, initiate the closing sequence. Once the door has hit the instrument and returned to an open position, take your readings and record them, then repeat the process two more times. Now place the instrument halfway across and repeat the process. Then again for 200mm across on the opposite side. When all is done you should have 9 results and 3 averages. For the next test, attach the tripod to the instrument and place to take your 10th reading. Place it 300mm up and 200mm across. Initiate the test 3 more times and gather your results for the average. Repeat for the 300mm up halfway across and the 300mm up 200mm across on the opposite side. For the last set of tests, attach an extender to the tripod and place to take your 18th reading. Place it 200mm across and 2500mm up. Initiate the test three times and gather your results for the average. Repeat for halfway across, 2,500mm up, and for 200mm across, 2,500mm up on the opposite side. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully we have answered any queries you may have about the KMG light, force testing, and why it is important to test your automated systems. 